In order to begin the firm's maximization problem, we have to see exactly what they are trying to maximize. And the goal of businesses and firms is to maximize profits. This is their sole purpose in life. They want to get profits as high as possible. And profits are going to be equal to total revenue minus the total cost. And we've talked about total revenue before. Total revenue is just going to be price times quantity. So exactly what do you sell this good for and exactly how many of these units of these goods do you sell it? do you sell so price times quantity is equal to our total revenue when we take total revenue subtract out the total cost we get the firm's profits and there are a lot of different ways for us to delve into the total cost right here there's fixed cost there's variable cost there's just a whole bunch of different costs that we need to go ahead and talk about but we're just going to talk about it in general in this particular section so here total cost can actually be divided into two different components it can be talking about the explicit cost or the implicit cost and that's going to cause us to have two different types of profits, which we're going to see have very, very shortly. So for our purposes, profits equals total revenue minus total cost, and total revenue is price times quantity. So what are the two different ways we can delve, uh, we can divide or separate costs into? We take a look at explicit versus implicit cost. And so what's the difference between explicit and implicit cost? Explicit costs are exactly that. They're paid directly to another entity. They are explicit. Implicit is going to take into account all the opportunity costs. So once again, our good friend, the opportunity cost. So let's go ahead, break these up a little bit more in depth and give you examples of each. So here, start off with the explicit costs. Explicit cost. Explicit costs, as you just noted right there, these are expenses directly paid to another economic entity. And these are things that you typically see on a firm's accounting or income statement. So here, expenses paid directly, paid directly, directly to another economic entity, to another economic entity. So these are things gonna be like wages, you have to pay your workers wages or your laborers wages, you pay them directly to another person, this is seen as an explicit cost. You have to pay for raw materials, so in order for you to bring your final good out into the marketplace, you have to pay your supplier uh, for their raw materials in order for you to begin the production process. This is gonna be seen as an explicit cost as well. So a lot of the things that you do see on a firm's income statement is going to be considered to be an explicit cost. And because of this, there are a few other names that we give to the explicit cost. They're also called accounting or out-of-pocket costs. So we can say also known as accounting costs, accounting costs, or out-of-pocket costs as well. So out-of-pocket costs, pocket costs. And once again, we're going to be using all of these terms interchangeably with one another. So explicit cost is the same as accounting cost is the same as out of pocket cost. And these are monies that you pay directly to another entity in order for you to conduct your business operation. So things like utilities, water for uh, Miami water, uh, Miami Dade water management in order for you to have running water, FPNL for electricity, any elect uh, any type of electricity company utilities, uh, you pay for your raw materials, your wages, etc, etc. On the other hand, we also have another type of cost known as implicit cost. So implicit cost. And we can't forget about these costs. And these are things that might not necessarily show up on a firm's income statement, but these are things that we have to consider in order for us to make the best decision for the firm. And these are going to refer to the opportunity costs. So it refers to the opportunity costs, opportunity costs of using resources that belong to a firm, of using resources that belong to a firm, that belong to a firm. So underline the keyword right here, the opportunity cost. So the next best alternative. So essentially what we have with the implicit cost is we're saying that, hey, You've put in some money, you've put in some time in order to in order to make this firm work. But what happens if you could have used that time or that money somewhere else? Your next best alternative. And that's where the implicit costs are going to come into play. 
Examples of implicit costs are going to be sort of like the foregone salary that you took for starting up this business, the foregone sort of interest or savings that you could have had if you didn't put it into your own business. So these are things that you might not readily see on a firm's income statement, but these are things that you have to consider to see what is going to be the best decision for you and also for your firm. So foregone salary, foregone earnings, foregone uh, interest. Basically, these are all going to be the implicit costs that we have with all of this. And because we have two different types of costs, that also leads us into having two different types of profits as well. So take a look at the equation once again for profits. So profits are going to be total revenue minus cost. So total revenue minus total cost, that just gives us profit in general. However, once we open up the total cost between the explicit and implicit cost, we get the, differenti the differentiation between accounting profit and economic profit. So accounting profit is the typical profit that you think about for a firm. It's just going to be total revenue minus your explicit cost. So everything that you pay out directly to another economic entity, the wages, the utilities, the mortgage payments, the lease payments, uh, the raw materials payments. Once you take total revenue, subtract out these costs, that is known as your accounting profit. And you'd be very happy if the firm turned a positive accounting profit because that firm is going to be profitable in this case. If you have a negative accounting profit, that means, oh no, the firm is sort of in the black, is in the red right now and they should probably do something in order to turn around the business. However, because we are an economics class, we don't carry care too much about the accounting profit, but we care more about the economic profit. And the economic profit is going to be total revenue minus explicit cost minus out the implicit cost as well. So we need to account for the opportunity cost as well. So here, the economic profit is always going to be less than the accounting profit because we are subtracting out one additional concept, one additional variable right here with the implicit cost. And anytime we talk about profit, in this chapter and also for the rest of the semester, we are going to be referring to the economic profit and not necessarily the accounting profit. So here with the economic profit, if the economic profit is positive, it just says that, hey, the firm or ourselves, we have made the right decision because we have a positive economic profit after accounting for all the explicit costs and all the opportunity costs, we are on the right track. If this number ever becomes a negative number, so if the economic profit ever turns negative, that just tells us that, oh no, we've chosen the wrong decision. We should have probably done the other option instead. So that's not going to be a good thing for us or for the firm in this instance. But what happens if economic profit is exactly equal to zero? Then we're sort of indifferent between our current choice and the next best alternative. And anytime economic profit is equal to zero, we consider this to be a special case and we give a name for that, which is known as a normal profit. So a normal profit equals an economic profit equal to zero. So that just tells us that we're sort of indifferent between the choice that we are currently on and our next best alternative once uh, essentially the opportunity cost sort of decision there. So as we've noticed before, a firm earns an an economic profit when profits are greater than zero after implicit costs are considered, and that just tells us that we have made the right decision. If economic profits are negative, meaning that we have an economic loss, we've chosen wrong, but when economic profit is exactly equal to zero, we have a normal profit. And a normal profit just tells us that we are earning a normal rate of return. It's the return just sufficient enough to keep investors satisfied. It represents the opportunity cost of capital. So here, Normal profits just tells us that we have a normal rate of return, we have zero economic profit, and everything is sort of in equilibrium or everything is sort of hunky-dory in this case. We're just sort of indifferent. It's almost seen like our break-even point in this instance. If a firm's rate of return on capital falls below the normal rate of return, then investors will put their funds to use elsewhere. And that just tells us that we're earning an economic loss and therefore we have chosen the wrong decision and we have should have chosen the next best alternative instead. So three different scenarios a firm can find itself in. It can be earning profits, it can be earning an economic loss, or it can be earning a zero economic profit where it is earning a normal profit. So in the next section, we're going to work with a very big example, a very big story problem, just to make sure that you have the idea of the differentiation between the explicit cost and the implicit cost, as well as the accounting profit and economic profit, because once again, they sound very similar. You'll see them in your accounting classes as well. But because this is an economics course, we need to take a look at the economic profit and the implicit cost just a little bit more into detail. 
And we'll go ahead and see all of that with our big story problem in the next lecture.